Happy Friday, everybody. It is Pastor Nick here again, and we're looking at John chapter 16, verse number 1 through chapter 17 and verse 26. And Jesus tells them here that they are going to be persecuted, but do not be alarmed. Uh, just remember that he told them that it would happen. And Jesus then tells them he must go away so that the comforter could come. And Jesus then says that when the spirit of truth will come, that he will guide into all truth. And Jesus tells them that they will sorrow because he will go away but that their sorrow will turn into joy like a woman who is giving birth. You see, as soon as the child is delivered, it is all worth it in the end. And Jesus says this because he says, I will see you again. In other words, this is not the end. While you may sorrow at my death and you may sorrow at my uh, leaving, I will see you again. And Jesus ends chapter 16 by declaring that in the world you will have persecution, but to be of good cheer because he has overcome the world. Because of this, there is peace that is in the heart. John chapter 17, Jesus is praying to the Father on behalf of his disciples. In the first five verses, we read Jesus praying to the Father about taking back his position in heaven. You see, he left his throne in order to become a man. But now Jesus is getting ready to die, to be buried, and then to rise again. And then he would go and ascend back into heaven and sit back on the right hand of the Father once again. And Jesus prays to the Father to keep those whom he had given to him. And Jesus then says that none of them is lost except for the son of perdition. And he is referring there, of course, to Judas. And Jesus then says that he is not of the world and that his followers are not of the world. And so the world hates them. Verse 17 is a very significant verse. It says, sanctify them by thy truth. Thy word is truth. And so the only way that we can truly be set apart from the world is by the word of God, because it is the living and complete truth. That's why we do these devotionals. That's why we study God's word is because it sets us apart. It sanctifies us and it sanctifies us in the truth of God. And I want you to notice something very important. And so I want to read to you verses 20 and 21. It says, Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. Jesus is praying here for all who would believe on him as a result of the witness and testimony of the apostles. That is talking about me. And that's talking about you, if you have believed in Jesus. I hope that it is talking about you. Listen, if you are a child of God, it is because of the testimony of the apostles and the word of God revealing that Jesus died on the cross for you. And so here we see that Jesus prayed for us. What a beautiful thing. Jesus prayed for us. And Jesus then ends his prayer by declaring that the world has not known the Father, but that Jesus declared the name of the Father to these, and that his love will remain in them. What a beautiful thing to know that Jesus prayed for you. Jesus prayed for me. Uh, what an awesome thing to know uh, that the Almighty God of heaven, when even when he became a man, that he prayed for you and I. Proverbs 16, verses 4 to 7. Proverbs 16, 4 to 7. Uh, we see in verse 4 that God made everything. There is nothing that God did not make. In verse 5, uh, do not be proud because it is an abomination to God. God hates pride. You need to realize that. God hates pride. He despises pride. And if we're full of pride, he is going to bring us down. In verse 6, mercy and truth purge iniquity. Uh, get the truth and get mercy, uh, the mercy of God. Uh, it purges out sin. It purges out iniquity. Finally, verse 7, 
this verse is, uh, it's very interesting because it reveals that God can give peace in our circumstances if we keep our ways to what is pleasing in his sight. So again, give your ways to God. Do what is pleasing in his sight. And what you will find is he will give you peace even in the middle of struggles, trials, tribulations, and suffering. Let's bow our heads. Our wonderful God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your love and mercy. And God, I just pray uh, that we would commit our ways to you. And God, I pray that we would study your word, that we would meditate upon it, that we would be sanctified by your truth because your word is truth. And God, I pray for uh, someone that might be watching that, uh, Lord, that doesn't uh, have Jesus as their savior. I pray that they would realize that Jesus died for them. God, uh, not only that, but God, uh, I pray for those uh, that might be watching that might know Jesus, but they don't have a local body where they fellowship uh, together with other believers. God, help them to realize that they need that. Help them to understand that, that the greatest truths in your word are revealed to us through your local New Testament churches. Uh, and God, I pray that they would see the need to be a part of, of one like this one. God, I thank you again for the church here. Uh, I thank you for uh, what you're doing uh, here in Fresno. And God, help us to continue to be a light and to shine for you. In Jesus' name, amen.